Hey guys, Money Man 300 back for some more Forza 6 videos here, and this time we're going to be doing a drive and tune for one of the new Logitech G Car Pack cars. And as you can see here, it is the 2013 Cadillac Limousine. So um, it's kind of a fun car to put in here. To me, the Oval's probably one of the places that you're going to have the best chance for success. We're going to try to lay down a little leaderboard time with this tune. See if we can't get uh, something up in the... I don't know if we can get top 100. Maybe after leaderboard wipe, uh, we'll be able to get there. But uh, we just started. Uh, got our warm-up lap in. And so just to get the tires warm and you know our rolling start, all that good stuff. So let's see what we can do here to get it going. We got no... Uh, no, it's pretty much all classic. No, no wings on this thing, so we're going bare bones. Uh, this is D class, also by the way. So uh, tuned it into D class. You could take it on there. You could put. There's a couple of engine swaps that you could take it up into higher classes. And I kind of played around with that a little bit, but honestly, I liked it best in D class. Ooh, get a little crazy there. Let's take a look at this thing from this. Look at that thing. <laughs> That's awesome. The green machine right there. The green machine. See what we can do coming around here in the corner. We'll run a couple laps here and then go take a look at the build and tune on this. Looks good there. A little flighty without uh, any downforce to keep it planted to the ground. But not bad. It's pretty easy to drive around this track. Um, I, I can show you a couple of different things you're going to want to do with the the tune to try to, if you know if you want to try to take it some other places. Um, kind of when we get in there. What can we do there? 50. Oh, oh really? So we're going to rewind back. I'm going to do this real quick. A little trick here if you didn't know that. If you have something where you mess up right in the beginning, uh, right in the beginning, just rewind back past the finish line and redo it. There you go. You know, something like that. That way you don't dirty a whole nother lap. So, uh, Although I think it dirtied my last lap now. All right then. Fine. Or maybe it was my last lap already dirty. It shouldn't have been. Huh. All right. 51.34 is my target time. I don't think I can get that. Definitely not going to get it on this lap. I just went sideways there. Woo! And sideways again. We're going to have to run one more. I wonder about that first lap. Huh. Maybe they changed that when you rewind back through the through the finish line that was dirty. Or maybe it was already dirty and I just really didn't, really wasn't paying that much attention on the first on that first lap there. So we're going to run this one. We'll probably have to run at least one more just to just because we kind of got it a little sideways in a couple of those turns there. Let's see what we can do here. It's going to be fun to get out there in a multiplayer race. <laughs> get out there, but again. You know, you can almost wait till the oval comes up, and then and then just run it there. Try to keep the car straight there. It always wants the car always wants to get a little sideways in that part of the track. Why's my split time so low? Oh, that must be that must have been on the lap. So it couldn't have been on a, as the lap just started. It couldn't have been on any really any other part here. A little bit steady here. Don't want to skid the tires at all if you can really help it. Uh, you just want to. Be as smooth as possible. Keep all four tires planted as much as possible. Because there are a couple places where the car's going to want to just try to skid a little bit on you. This is one of them. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep it. I did. Don't hit the wall. There we go. That's pretty good. I think this lap will be okay. Try to maintain good speed all the way through. See what we did there. 52, 287. I'm never going to get to that 51. I mean, pretty much running full out, full throttle all the way through. And that's that. Uh, we did beat our, we did beat Gabriel, who was our, uh, our rival in that one at 55 seconds. I really hadn't put down any times. I probably did. I probably had some multiplayer times on that, but I haven't sat down and lapped that track before. So let's finish this out and let's see what place that puts us into. And then we'll go take a look at our build and tune. So, yeah, the car pack's out. Get out there uh, for you car pass holders. Get out there and download it. It should be all available for you. If you don't, I think it's $7 to get the car pack. Um, sponsored by Log Logitech and their new G-Series wheel. Um, go out there and check that out. I haven't looked a ton at it uh, at this point. It's not, I don't have that wheel, so I'm not able to do a review at this time. Uh, maybe sometime in the future on that one. So let's get through all this. 
And let's take a look at our leaderboard here. Let's do that. I'm going to have to X. So it's 91st in my area. Look at that, 154th. So, ha. And then once I take all these uh, RX3s off the leaderboard in the leaderboard wipe, which is going to happen, we're going to be probably well inside of the top 100 out there. Um, let's see where we were. 154th with the Cadillac Limo. Probably not any other Cadillac Limos yet out here. So let me take a look real quick. Looks like we'll have the, the top Cadillac Limo on the d-class leaderboard so still says i'm only in the top two percent in 154th but that's okay um you take all these rx3s off of here and we're going to be right up in the top 100 which is good so let's hop out of here uh, continue this out and let's go take a look at the build and the tune for this this is going to be oval tuned and i'll point out some spots as i go through it to where you're going to want to make changes if you want to try to drive this on other tracks but right now that's going to be a competitive uh, when the oval comes up you can have some fun and pull out the limo uh, and surprise your friends with that as you see them in the rearview mirror driving you know whatever they're trying to drive but um come on loading 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 all right here we go let's back out of here got that green like the super close up of the car in the background making everything green uh let's get over here to the upgrade shop all right, first things, let's head over here and take a look at our conversions. And we do have an engine swap. We do have the 5.7 liter V8. There are other engine swaps you can put in here. There is the V10 that's in here. Um, it's it's a trade-off. Like, you could try to do this one. Um, and if I look at the speed, you're looking at 181 miles an hour, and you can probably add just a little bit more on that one. On this one, we are at uh 186 so i think you're going to end up about the same with this it's um it's a little heavier so i don't think it's worth it if you're going to keep this thing in class d and then there is the nascar racing engine in here which you can do um take on up there and it gets a little dicey you could maybe make this thing into this is probably what you're gonna do if you want to take it up into c class we're pretty much topped out with the engine that we have now in d class if you want to take this up into c class i would slap this thing on there and then uh, roll your stock tires all that and, and go with that super speed so that's something that you can do as well um i do not have a or take that back i do have a drivetrain swap and i did that because by default this thing is front wheel drive and i didn't think the front wheel drive was going to work out real well for it and you also get a few PI back. So I did swap this to a rear wheel drive. So that may get me caught up in the leaderboard wipe, but I don't really care about that if that happens. Um, the problem has been fixed and that problem was with the uh, all wheel drive swap. So anyway, we do have a, a swap. So we have an engine swap and we also have a drivetrain swap in there. I do not have, as you saw, the any of the arrow, the Forza arrow or any other, the, the only options you have on this car are the Forza arrow. We're gonna have stock. Uh, compound tires we're gonna have stock width uh, none of that is needed uh, being an oval tune we do have um, some some light wheels on here with the rg2 um, advance and i believe we are stock size so you actually could just jack the size up on these if you wanted to i don't think it affects your pi but i do just have those at stock moving on our transmission we do have the race transmission and the reason for that is is you get basically a free transmission upgrade and you should take that every time we also have the race drive line for a little bit additional weight reduction and the race differential moving on over we're going to have the race brakes we're going to have the race springs and dampers now you could get away potentially uh, without brakes and without springs and dampers in in this and maybe get just a touch more horsepower out of it i didn't look at the you know i'm just thinking through that option now i don't know how much pi so you get about four pi back there and you get three so you get seven i don't think it's going to allow you to do and i'll show you that when we get in there i don't know if there's a combination that'll allow you to, to stay in the top of d and and get more horsepower out of that uh, we do have the race front anti-roll bars and the race rear anti-roll bars uh, we do have one up in here and that's just because i was sitting at 6.99 and when i looked at it it does it shows that it does just ever so slightly increase my top speed although now it says it's 186.3 and 186.3 so you could go either way it was i couldn't find a combination this does take 60 pounds off but it really does not impact the the top end of the car so i have it on there just 
literally just to do PI. Um, I couldn't get any weight out of it. This thing is heavy. It's 5,700 pounds. Um, and you can take 1,200 pounds off of it. I don't think that's really worth it. It's still just going to be super heavy. And you might as well just leave the weight in it and put horsepower, in my opinion. So uh, we're going to run through these. We're going to have a lot of these. we got race intake. we got race fuel system. Race ignition. Race exhaust. Uh, sport cams. Was not so this is the one area we don't have and it takes it up another 25 pa which i don't think you can get out of anything else in there without adjusting some of the engine parts so race valves race engine block race pistons and compression oh i forgot a key in your upgrades you need to put the race uh the uh, centrifugal supercharger on and i'll show you that in just a second i totally forgot about that over there we do have an aspiration conversion as well as the engine block and the drive train swap so um and we have the race centrifugal supercharger on there and we're gonna do nothing with the flywheel the oil and cooling and i don't ever use those so none of these these those are just stock there so that's all of our parts there let me go back over here and show you guys real quick aspiration conversion we do have the centrifugal supercharger on there uh, that's the most economical bang for your buck uh, add when you use that 5.7 liter v8 engine uh, let's hop in and take a look at our tuning so we're going to have 28 and 28 for our tires 3.95 is the final drive and I try to just tune that so that we're running at you know peak rpm down the down the back straight away there uh, next up is the alignment negative 2.0 negative 1.5 are the only changes that i made there so we just add a little bit of negative camber there and our roll bars we soften those up we're at 12.34 and 10.56 um this might be one area i don't know i'd have to drive it on some tracks where you could do some tuning on to make it work or at least you know be drivable on some other tracks um i did soften up the springs we ended up at 1051 and 905 i left the ride height at default uh, we stiffened up the the rebound so we ended up at 10 8 and 10 3 and we softened up the bump a little bit at 2.6 and 2.1 uh, we do not have the option to do anything with our downforce uh, brake balance really doesn't matter but it's set at 48 and 150 uh, differential something you're going to notice a little different do have that 80 percent acceleration um, really doesn't make that much difference because you're running it wide open most of the time um, and on, on the you know on the straightaway stuff but i do use the 100 percent deceleration and that is just so that if you do need to slow down you can it kind of helps you as you're slowing it's hard to explain so when i when i let off the throttle it helps me slow down into a turn and dive into the turn better this is not really needed in d class because you never let off the throttle but if you were to take this up into a higher classes there may be a point or two on the track that you would have to let up on so that's why we have that 100 percent um differential there and i believe looking through here that should be the last of the options so there you have it get you a tune and a build all set up for the 2013 Cadillac. Uh, and this will work well. It should work also, I didn't drive it, but should work really well on the Indy Oval uh, as well as the Daytona Oval. So a couple of tracks that you can use this on and be competitive in both multiplayer and on the Rivals leaderboards. So I'm gonna end it with that. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.